Welcome. It's good to be back. Welcome to the Grace Hub Discipleship Ministries House Church Service on this beautiful, sunny, nice day, uh, late June. The use of the word joy throughout today's text speaks to a beautiful thought that we need to wrap our hearts around for a little while here. With the concept of joy, God's living word is teaching us that joy itself is an aspect of being and becoming aware of God's grace active in your life. This awareness is realized in developing the heart's knowledge to compassion, which is a gift harbored through humbly walking with your God. God with us is yet again the theme, a theme, as we see Jesus out and about being this living, life-giving, affirming fount of compassion and mercy to all who seek him. I found it in, an interesting fact that both the age of the young girl and the woman uh, suffering for years of suffering in the, today's gospel was that missional number 12. I am sure that the gospel writer's heart was more than shaped by God to speak to the 12 tribes of Israel to truly hear and be led by that binding commonality. We are the people of God. We are the people of God, but most importantly, children of the King, children of grace and promise. Promises that aspect of perseverance and overarching hope for things to come. We are always a people in waiting, and our human nature allows us at times to feel the suffering and the anxiety and the literal pain of this all too temporal world. We are not to be a world unto ourselves, however, but that is what we've allowed to take place in some form or fashion. We are stripping the miraculous away from Jesus, as well as our everyday lives, to be centered around the self and its graceless temptations to fall prey to greed, indifference, and darkness. For the victories and seeming miracles that are centered around the self, or truly said the unholy trinity of I, me, mine, are shallow victories at best. I love that statement, the unholy trinity of I, me, mine. My mentoring pastor, that was actually one of the phrases that he categorized for talking about selfishness and uh, all other vices that are not fruits of grace and fruits of the Spirit. These are Satan's victories or empty promises for a temporal and fading purpose does not seek a God with us for it can only open itself to it can't really open itself to really and truthfully understanding grace. The psalmist again struggles with understanding evil and why things happen. He says, What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? And we all must remember we, have, we will have those challenging times, those pits and those valleys, where we probably will be saying that to ourselves. What, what should I do? What am I going to do here? Truth truly being told, we can't understand evil, especially when we unknowingly are both blind to it, as well as fall to temptation from it. The graceless wilderness, or better said, the reality of hell, is one where we don't traverse that valley of suffering with a grace-filled, humble accountability, to know, all caps, that there is always hope. That whether the storms of life are too deep or too dark, we have a God with us. A God of true compassion, mercy, love, and grace. Jesus Christ, our crucified Lord and Savior, our Redeemer. This past week I formed a petition uh, through change.org. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with uh, change.org. It's one of many groups uh, that has 
or allows you to both sign uh, others' petitions uh, ranging from uh, abuse to animals, health care, etc., to uh, forming your own petition. And um, I decided to form my own petition uh, a few weeks back that was about um, a special I saw on Fox 32 that was talking about the uh, plight um, of the middle class and the poor uh, with the escalating rental prices. And, um, you know, again, think about that title, Change.org. It's an interesting title for a ministry of political petitions to address issues in this worldly culture, society. Many of the petitions, as I said, I've signed uh, were to care for animals that were either tortured, abused, for the sake of making money. Uh, a lot of other petitions ranged from failing cultural ethics to ethical accountability. There's that big secularized, over -poli overly politicized concept of being responsible, ethical accountability. It is more than a sad reality that the body of Christ today has been straightjacketed to political ideologies and agendas as well as reconstructing the truth, all caps, of the gospel of Jesus to strip him down to not really being any kind of voice reaching and truthfully, all caps, shaping the hearts of humanity. The petition that I made was addressing the concern for skyrocketing rents and the new burden and suffering it's going to cause many people. As with most petition type ministries such as change.org, they post to social media sites such as Facebook in order to grow the petition and awareness and signage. <coughs> Facebook literally lives up to its name in the sense that people get a surface impression of being who you are, what you do, and where you are in life's journey. Being in the midst of a current judgmental, intellectually driven culture makes it more than easy to label, categorize, and condemn those uh, through self-righteous indignation. This one acquaintance literally essentially labeled and condemned my petition about uh, lowering the rents or capping the rents because of my husband and being in politics. You know, it's just one side or the other. Partisanism is something that is dividing the church because the church is not to be about politics. The hypocrisy of it, as well as a sad, was a sad addition to truly acting out of graceless behavior since this person, they consider themselves very active and devout in their church. Just hop into the shoes for the moment of the poor, suffering, uh, hemorrhaging woman who was condemned for her illness by being labeled unclean. She most likely wasn't allowed to be, go in the temple and uh, most likely was not allowed to participate in many things because of this label. She had to walk those streets with a scarlet letter upon her head created by indifference and heartless law created by indifferent religious leaders. Yes, she needed a miracle. She needed to find compassion, which she found in Jesus. Saving grace is more than the reality of the gift of the cross. It is harboring a beautiful hope that grows love, that resurrects the soul to service for God and neighbor, truly. Her gratitude and gracious response to the love and compassion and mercy Jesus imparted to her came through her falling at his feet and confessing that she was the one to touch his cloak. What a faith. What faith. What a beautiful sense of commitment, honesty, and humility. <clears throat> if this acquaintance uh, 
of mine would have removed the lens of judgment, political polarization, and self-righteous condemnation, they would have perhaps opened their hearts to the problem and plight of greedy landlords, of this unethical uh, real estate market, uh, the indifferent politics put in place to act as a band-aid to really solving the problem of housing. What do I mean by the band-aid of housing? Section 8 is not an answer. Everything should be addressed. All rents should be addressed. All ways of caring for neighbor and where they are should be addressed. That's what Jesus taught us, is to open our hearts unconditionally to love and care for neighbor. We can say it, but are we living into it? No, we're not. This person instead uh, chose to publicly shame me and blame my husband and friends simply based on their surface labels of political agenda. Being an evangelical Christian, our labels I live into in the biblical non-political sense of the words. Non-political is all caps in my sermon. As a member of the priesthood of all believers, and now I called an ordained pastor to serve the Church of Christ, I am spiritually accountable in all humility and formation to preach, teach, and lead others to spread the gospel, the good news, the living words of Christ to a weary and struggling world. My life is but temporal here on this floating rock among billions of things the good Lord has created. I willingly chose to serve Christ. His gospel imperative to love him and neighbor as my gracious response to all he continually showers me with daily that I do not truly deserve. All of us are showered daily with the beautiful gifts of life and grace from Christ that we truly do not deserve. The moment we all come to the realization of the truth, all caps, at the center of the living words of God, we will suffer to battle against the growing graceless wilderness that surrounds us in reality and in our thoughts, tempted and blinded by Satan's efforts to tear us away from continuing that walk with Christ. We can't live in a graceless wilderness. We will only die there. We will only die there bereft of hope, joy, mercy, and compassion. We will be in bondage to evil and lawlessness and purposelessness. For we can't survive in a world centered and catering around the self. Perhaps blocking and unfriending this person on Facebook wasn't really the right answer. Or maybe it was just a simple human solution to not wanting to go further into a graceless debate about about this whole entire affair of uh, condemnation and politics and whatnot. And you know, truth be told, I don't think he would have been somebody who would even listen. We have to pick our battles. That's where it comes, what it comes down to. We have to pick our battles. Jesus could have simply chosen to not heal Jairus' daughter for political reasons and judgmentalism, but he didn't at all. He saved her. The same for the woman. Perhaps, uh, like the Old Testament God, Jesus would have shown uh, anger towards her for daring to move to seek healing, but he didn't. He knelt down to her and said, Your faith has made you well. What a beautiful thought. <clears throat> Jesus is our example of the beautiful, the new natured behavior, the new creation we were given. He is the new creation. As a God who came down to us to save us in more ways than one, Christ Jesus' love, mercy, and compassion, and grace are the glory, joy, and hope of the kingdom of God. 
Picking our battles as a freely responsible child of grace, child of promise, needs to be about Christ alone, faith alone, through grace alone, and by word alone. If we are to triumph the gospel beyond ourselves into the coming century. It was 2,000 years ago that Jesus came into our world to help us to see in a new and beautiful way. Where are we? I am not a warrior for political agendas. I never will be, or for its ideologies. I am a warrior, and I am, not, I am a warrior for his gospel. I am not a warrior for denominational polity or for the preservation of the institutional church. I am not a warrior for the world and the culture of the self. I am a servant. I am a disciple of Jesus called a commission to live by, through, and for the gospel. The battleground is the turf war between the evil one and God for the transformation of your soul to be compassion for neighbor, to become, all caps, become a beacon of hope and promise to others, therefore releasing joy, the fruit of grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the new creature, the new creation in our hearts. Help us to learn to be founts of compassion, love, mercy, kindness, and all the beautiful fruits you've exampled to our neighbor. Help us to grow in faith and be truly a people of grace. In your most holy and precious name we pray. Amen.